Let's build this stopwatch component. It has a label to indicate the time lapsed, a start button, and a clear button. When we click the start button, the timer starts and that button turns into a stop button. When we click the stop button, it'll stop the timer where it is and return to a start button. If we click it again, the timer continues. At any point, if we click the clear button, it stops the timer and resets it to zero. We'll start by building out the static UI and slowly add functionality to it. Let's declare a function called stopwatch and return a div with a label that says zero milliseconds and two buttons. The first will say start and the second will say clear. I'll just copy in some styles to make it look nice. Now let's render this and see how it looks. Awesome, it looks just like the original. The next thing we should consider is what parts of this render function are stateful. And by that I mean which parts can change over time. That would be the time lapsed and whether or not the stopwatch is running. So we know whether to say start and stop. So for right now, I'm going to accept the state as props. We'll destructure it right here in the parameter list with lapse and running. Then let's use lapse here and we'll make the start button text dynamic with running, ternary, stop, or start. Now here I'm going to say const state equals lapse zero running false and spread that state across the component I'm rendering. Finally, let's change the lapse to 10 and running to true. Awesome, the lapse is showing properly and the button text is correct too. Cool, now let's say function render stopwatch and let's put all of our state spread and rendering stuff in there. Now let's call that to get our initial render. Then we'll say const new state equals lapse 20 running true. And then we'll object assign onto the old state, this new state. And then we'll call it again. Super, so that's re-rendering properly. Now let's move those last lines to a handy little function called setState. This function will get the new state as a parameter. Now we can call that with lapse 30 and that works great. Now let's make this first button interactive. We'll add an onClick handler and assign that to a handle run click function. Let's create that function down here with const handle run click equals this arrow function. And just to make sure it's working, we'll add set state lapse 40 running true. And we'll click the button. Perfect. Now let's make the clear button interactive. We'll add an onClick handler and assign that to a handle clear click function. Then we'll just copy paste the other one and set state to lapse zero running false. Cool, now it's all working. We can start and clear it. Now let's make this thing actually keep track of time lapsed. We'll update the handle run click with const start time equals date dot now. Then we'll add a set interval. And inside of that we'll have a set state with lapsed of date dot now minus the start time. And then finally we'll add a set state of running is true. Let's give that a spin. Cool, that's totally working now. Isn't it amazing how fast that's updating? React is re-rendering the whole app with every change. Pretty awesome, right? Now we need to clear that interval somehow. Otherwise, we'll never be able to stop this. So let's go ahead and get the timer ID from our set interval with const timer equals that set interval. Then we'll add the timer to our set state call to keep track of that. Then when we're handling the clear button click, we'll call clear interval state.timer. Let's give that a try. Cool, so that's working. The last thing we need to do to get feature parity here is make the stop button work. So in our handle run click function, let's check if the timer is currently running. And if it is, then we'll clear the interval and set the state to running false. Cool, that's mostly working. Just one last little bug, where when we click start, it always starts at zero. The start time here needs to be calculated based on the lapse time in state. So we'll subtract lapse from date.now. Terrific, now it's all working just like our original one was working. This is a lot of spaghetti code. Luckily, state is a first class citizen in React and we can put all of this state in our stopwatch component. We can make our component manage its own state internally rather than simply accepting props like we're doing here. I wanted to start by doing things this way though so that you see that there's not a whole lot of magic going on under the hood.
it's pretty much just JavaScript calling functions. But let's clean this up doing things in the idiomatic React way. To do this, we need to change from a simple function component to a class component. So we'll say class stopwatch extends react.component. Every React component must have a render method. So let's go ahead and add that here. And then we'll take the contents of our original function and put that in our render method. One difference here is that instead of the props being passed as arguments to our render method, we have them on our instance of the stopwatch component, which we can access using this. So we'll destructure laps and running off of this.props. And now everything is functioning exactly as it was before. We can test it out here. Cool. Now, instead of props, we're going to be managing our own state. So instead of destructuring these things from props, we're going to destructure them from state. Because state is an instance property, we can initialize it in our constructor. So let's create a constructor. We'll accept all the arguments and just forward all those arguments up to the parent class with super and then dot 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 args. Then let's go down and grab that state assignment and we'll move it up to here and add it as a property of our instance. This constructor song and dance is a little annoying. So instead, let's initialize this property using a public class field and get rid of all that constructor stuff. There, that's functionally equivalent to what we had before and it's so much easier. So now none of our functionality actually works, but we're pulling the state from our instance rather than the old variable. Let's make everything else work too. Let's pull these two event handlers into our class as instance properties as well. We'll just copy and paste the assignment and get rid of the const declaration. Now, instead of referencing the state variable, we'll reference the instance state property by adding this dot in front of it. Then in our render method, we can pass these functions to the click handlers by adding this dot to those. We're almost there. The last thing we need to address to get things working again is how we set state. React actually provides an optimized function like the one we have that's available on every React component. It happens to be called setState. So everywhere we're calling setState, we'll just add this dot in front of it so we can use the instance version instead of our own function. Let's try that out. Sweet, it's working. Cool, so now we can remove our own setState function and with that we can actually remove the render stopwatch function and we no longer need to spread our old state on the props because the stopwatch is actually managing its own state internally now, so we can render it all by itself. There are a few other things we should clean up about this component before we call it a day. First of all, it's a good idea to only put on state the things that are actually going to be used when rendering. This is because every time we call set state, React will re-render our component, and we don't want to actually do that if we need to update something that doesn't affect rendering anyway. Right now we've put laps and running on state, and that's great, but we don't actually need the timer on state. We did that before as a convenience, but we could improve this by making timer an instance property instead. So instead of const timer, we'll say this.timer, and instead of this.state.timer, we'll simply say timer. And then we can remove this from the set state call. Cool, the next thing we could improve here is where we call set state. As I said, React's version of set state is heavily optimized for performance. One of the things React does is batch calls to set state. So we could call it a bunch of times in a row and that doesn't guarantee that React will actually update our instances state and re-render every time we call set state. This means that if we're going to be setting new state based on old state, like we're doing here with the running state, it's generally safer to ask React what the state is before making any changes. To do this, we'll pass an updater function that accepts the state and returns new state. So at the top here, we'll say this.setState state arrow function. And then we'll just put all of our code in our updater. Then rather than this.state, we'll simply reference the state object that we're accepting as a parameter. And instead of two individual set state calls here and here, we'll simply return our new state of running not state.running to toggle the running state. Awesome, there's one last thing to do here and I'm going to illustrate the problem first by adding a toggle button for whether to show the stopwatch. Now I want to log the value of the lapse state after the set state call. So I'll add a callback as a second argument which we react will call after the state has been set. And then I'll say console.log this.state.lapse. Now let's pop open developer tools and start the stopwatch. Then we'll remove the stopwatch by unchecking this checkbox.
we'll see that our console logs and a whole bunch of errors are popping up in our console. What's going on here is React is telling us that we tried to call set state on a component that no longer exists on the page. This means that it has been unmounted. React doesn't actually set state on that component because it has been unmounted, but React warns us because it's indicative of a memory leak. To avoid this problem, let's add a component will unmount lifecycle method to our component, where we'll call clear interval this dot timer. This allows us to clean up our timer before React removes it from the page. Now let's try that. Perfect, the logs have stopped and we're no longer getting the warning. We've avoided a memory leak. In review, to manage state in a React component, you create a class component, then set an instance property called state with the data that changes over time and you use in your render method. Then to update the state, you call set state. If you need to reference the current state when setting new state, you should use an updater function like we did here. If you need to reference that state after it's been set, then you can use a callback function like we did here. 